Hi, this is Michel Birler. We are continuing our investigation of simulation. And in this lecture, I would like to talk about variance reduction methods. The main idea is that we have seen that the number of draws that we have to generate in a simulator is related to the precision we would like to reach. And variance reduction methods will be such that we will be able to reach the same precision with a lower number of draws. Or, equivalently, we will reach a higher precision with the same number of draws. There are two techniques that I would like to see in this lecture. The first one is called antithetic draws, and the second one, control variates. Let's use a very simple example in order to illustrate the idea of antithetic draws. I will use simulation here to calculate an integral. So this is called Monte Carlo integration. And this integral actually is easy to calculate. Actually, I can calculate it analytically. This is the value that I obtain. But now I will calculate it also by simulation. And we know how to do it. We have to draw from the uniform 0, 1, because I have an integral between 0 and 1. And for each draw, we take the exponential, and then we take the average. Here, I will make a small adaptation. I will consider the draws 2 by 2. And you will see why in the next slide. I consider capital R draws from a uniform 0, 1. And then I continue to draw. I have another series of draws from the same distribution that I denote by S. OK, and how do I calculate the approximation of the integral? I make the sum of all the draws that I've generated. So here I have the two series. And then I divide by the total number of draws, which is 2R in this case. So this estimation can be actually written by this. So the interpretation of this formula is that for each R, I take the average between E to the R and E to the S. So this is the average value between the two. And I do it capital R times to obtain the approximation of integral. So if I use R equals 10,000, which means that I'm using 20,000 rows, the mean that I obtain is 1.720, so which is the approximation of this value. And I can calculate the empirical variance as well, which is 0 0.123. OK, so this is the regular way of calculating an integral using simulation. But now what I will do, I will recycle some of the draws. And the idea comes from the fact that if a random variable x follows a uniform distribution between 0 and 1, well, 1 minus x also follows a uniform distribution between 0 and 1. And this is basically the idea of the recycling of draws. So if I have a draw from x that I denote by r, I will consider 1 minus r as another draw. That's what I've done here. So I consider here independent draws from uniform 0, 1, capital R. And I use the same formula that I had before, but instead of s, I use 1 minus r here. This is the only difference. Everything else is the same. I have calculated this approximation using r equals 10,000 as I did in the previous slide. And here I obtain this value, 1.7183, which is up to the five first digits, exactly the same value that I calculated analytically here. And actually, if you calculate the variance, you see that it is very small. And to remind you what I had in the previous slide, this is the value that I obtained using independent draws. And this was the variance. This looks really magical, right? I have used only half of the draws. But each draw has been used in two ways, one as r, once as 1 minus r. So I have saved 
calculation because I didn't need to generate the S and I was able to significantly reduce the variance of the estimate and therefore increase the precision of the approximation that I have obtained. So this looks really magical. And this is a picture of the draws. So as you can see, the independent draws are spread across the interval 1e. Remember, I draw from 0, 1 and I take the exponential. So I obtain a quantity which is between 1 and e. While if I look at the antithetic draws, the values are way more concentrated around the true value, which is represented by this vertical line here. So this is a pictorial representation of the significant decrease of variance that I described in the previous slide. Let's try to understand this magical outcome, this win-win situation. I use less draws and I have a higher precision. To do that, let's calculate the variance of these terms that I've been using, these terms that were the mean of two draws, the two series of draws. So let's call x1 and x2 two random variables with the same distribution and independent. So this is what IID stands for, independent and identically distributed. And both have the mean theta. Then I can calculate the variance of this mean here. So this is one fourth, the variance of x1, the variance of x2, plus two times the covariance between x1 and x2. In the first example that I gave you, x1 and x2, so that I denoted by r and s for the draws at that time, they were independent. So this term was zero. But in the second example, I had r and one minus r, x and one minus x. And these two are negatively correlated. Therefore, the covariance between the two is negative. But if it is negative, it means the variance here will be lower than if the covariance is zero. And this is actually the source of the gain that we are making. We are exploiting correlation between two random variables in order to improve the variance. Let's do the analysis analytically because we have a simple example. In the first experiment, I used independent draws. So x1 was simply e to the u, and x2 was also e to the u. Therefore, we have exactly the same variance, which is 0 0.2420. Okay, so this is the expectation of the square minus the square of the expectation. You can do the math, and you get the 0 0.2420. And they are independent, so the covariance is 0. Therefore, when I calculate the variance of this mean here, x1 plus x2 divided by 2, what I obtain is 0 0.1210. Well, let's go back to the experiment. The empirical variance that we obtained was 0 0.1230. So we have a closed value here. Okay, so the empirical variance is close to the analytical variance that we can calculate. Let's now consider the antithetic case where x1 was again e to the u, but x2 was e to the 1 minus u. This is the antithetic version of the draws. The variance of the two are exactly the same, and this has been calculated in the previous slide, so it's 0 0.2420. But now we need to calculate the covariance because we are not independent anymore, x1 and x2. The covariance is the expectation of the product minus the product of the expectation. And if you do the math, you can calculate this negative correlation, minus 0, 0.2342. If I put everything together to calculate the variance of this term, I obtain 0 0.0039. And again, if you go back to the experiment, this is very close to the empirical value that we have obtained using this experiment.
So the gain that we make here is due to this negative value here. That's what decreases the value of the variance. This looks great, and it, it's really very simple and very useful. You see, so each time I have a draw, I recycle it and I calculate the antithetic version of the draw, plug it in the formula, and I'm, I'm all set. But it does not always work, and we have to be careful. In particular, the relationship between the draw from the uniform and the variable that we are looking at is important. So see, if I denote this relationship by h, so x1, the variable that I want to simulate, is a function of a series of uniforms, 0, 1. And these are i, i, d, uniform 0, 1. In the example, h was the exponential, if you remember. The antithetic version of x1 is x2, where I, I apply the same function h using the antithetic version of the uniform distribution, 1 minus u1 to 1 minus um. x2 has the same distribution as x1, for the reasons that we discussed. u is a uniform 0, 1. 1 minus u is also uniform 0, 1. Therefore, when you apply the function h, you get the same distribution. But the key thing is that I will reduce the variance if x1 and x2 are negatively correlated. And this is guaranteed only if h is monotonic in each of its coordinates. So this is what I mean by it does not always work. In particular, if h is not monotonic, there is absolutely no guarantee that the variance will be reduced. It, it, it can actually be increased. This is not what we want to do. Let's take an example of this statement. Here I took this integral, which is again the integral between 0 and 1, of a function. But here the function is not exponential, it's square. And when the exponential is a monotonic function, the square is not monotonic. I generate the antithetic draw, so for x1, this is u minus 1 half square. This is the first version of the draws, and this is the antithetic version. I replace u by 1 minus u. But in this case, if you make the calculation, the covariance between the two is positive. Therefore, the variance will be increased, in this case a little bit, it's not a big number, but it will increase. This is the main message about the antithetic draws. It's very simple to implement. You can have very significant improvement of the variance, as we could see in the simple example that I presented. But it does not always work. You have to make sure that the function that you use to obtain your variables is monotonic in you. I did the plot as well as we did in the other experiment. So this is the plot for the independent draws. It's relatively spread. Again, the vertical line corresponds to the value of the integral. But if I calculate the antithetic, I have also a spread. And actually, I have a peak here. And if you put them together, you see that there is not much difference. And actually, the variance of the antithetic is a little bit higher. Good, so this was the first technique, antithetic draws. Main message is extremely simple to implement, but we have to verify that in the specific context where we use it, it will actually reduce the variance. Now the second technique is called control variates. This one will guarantee that the variance will always be reduced. It cannot be increased. The price to pay is that it will be a little bit more complicated. So let's see how it works. We are trying to calculate an empirical mean of a distribution, capital X. So capital X is the output of the simulation, and we would like to calculate the mean. I denote the mean by theta. What I do is that I will exploit another output of the simulation that I know, and I call it Y. And what I mean by I know it, I mean that I know its mean. I know the real mean. 
because it's a process that I control. And I will give you an example afterwards. OK, so I have two outputs of the simulation. One, I don't know the mean. I want to use the simulator to estimate it. And the second one, I know the mean as an input, the true mean. And I denote it by u. Now I will combine these two variables in the following way. I write x plus c, which is a parameter, times y minus u, and I obtain a variable that I denote by capital Z here. And why do I do that? Because by construction, because the average value of y minus u is 0, the expectation of z is the same as the expectation of x. And you see where I'm going. What I would like to do, because I would like to calculate theta, is to say, well, I will calculate theta as the expectation of z, and I will design z such that its variance will be smaller than the variance of x. That's the idea. I have two variables, at x and z, with the same mean, which is the quantity I'm interested in, and I would like to design c such that z has a smaller variance than x. Let's calculate the variance of z. So the variance of z is the variance of x plus cy, right? because this is constant. It's not, it's not a random variable, which is the variance of x plus c squared the variance of y plus 2c the covariance between x and y. And now the idea is that I would like to find c such that the variance of z is the smallest possible. It's minimum. What I have to do is to find the minimum of a polynomial in C, so it's a polynomial of degree 2. Okay, so I will, I will calculate the derivatives in order to find the minimum. That's what I've done here. So this is the first derivative, 2C var y plus 2 cof xy. And at a minimum, this derivative must be 0. Therefore, the value at which this derivative is 0 that I denote by c star is given by minus the covariance divided by the variance of y. I need to verify that it is indeed a minimum. To do that, I calculate the second derivative, which is 2 times the variance of y. This is positive, so I have a convex parabola, and this is indeed a minimum. Very good. So c star is the value that makes the variance of z the smallest possible. Therefore, I define z star now, which is equal to z, where I replace c by c star. And this is what I, I obtain here. z star is defined as x. This is c star times y minus u. And if I calculate the variance, the variance of z star is the variance of x minus this quantity which is positive. It's a square divided by a variance. In the worst case, it's zero. It's when x and y are independent. But of course, I decide about y, so I need to find a y which is correlated with x in order to reduce the variance. As I told you in the beginning, control variates guarantee that the variance of the new random variable will always be less or equal to the previous one. And this is the proof of this statement. Now, how does it work in practice? Well, clearly, the covariance between x and y and the variance of y are usually not known. But as we always do in simulation, when we don't know the true value of the variance or the covariance, we use the sample that we have generated in order to calculate them. OK, so this is what I denote by cov hat and var hat here. So these are the estimate of the covariance and the variance that we obtain from the draws that we have generated with the simulator. Still, these quantities are quite cumbersome to calculate. So there is actually a, a better way to calculate what we need, and I will, I will describe to you now. It's based on the use of linear regression. Remember, I have these two variables x. x is the variable for which I'm looking for an estimate of the expectation. 
y is the variable for which I know the expectation. It's mu. And they are correlated, right? Uh, we, we talked about it. So the, the more correlated they are, the more the variance will be reduced. What we will do is that we will regress x on y. Remember, we have generated all this data. So we have for each draw a value of x and a value of y. So we have the draws of these two. And we can do linear regression on these two variables. So we regress x on y. A is the coefficient of y in the linear regression, and B is the intercept. And the error term, as always in linear regression, is a normal distribution with mean 0 and variance sigma square. As you know from your textbook in uh, linear regression, the least square estimators of A and B are given by the ratio between the covariance of x and y and the variance uh, of y for A. So, so this is the, the estimate of uh, parameter A. And then the estimate of the intercept is obtained by calculating the mean of x minus a hat times the mean of y. And actually, if you look at this formula here, a hat, the estimate of the coefficient of the linear regression, is exactly minus c star, or c star is exactly minus a hat. So there is a relationship between the result of this linear regression and the variance reduction method that we have seen, this control variance. Moreover, if we calculate this quantity here, b hat plus a hat mu, what is this quantity? Well, this is the quantity that we obtain when we plug mu in the model. We replace y by mu, which is the, the expected value, and this is the prediction obtained by the linear model at the value of mu. What is it? b hat is equal to x bar minus a hat y bar, and a hat mu is here. Now, if you rearrange the term by putting a hat in front, you get this quantity here. And we have just seen that minus a hat is exactly c star. And this is exactly the control variate estimate of theta. In summary, the control variate estimate that I'm looking for theta hat can be obtained using the linear model that we have estimated, evaluated at mu. Therefore, the procedure is really simple. I run my simulator and I collect the draws for x and for y, both of them. Then I calculate the linear regression and I obtain the estimate a hat and b hat of the coefficient and the intercept of my linear model. And then I calculate simply this quantity to obtain the estimate theta hat. As you see, this is again a way to exploit the correlation between two quantities in the simulator, one that we don't know and one that we know. Let's go back to our simple example with the integral. In this case, the x was e to the u, right? Now the idea of the control variate is that I need to find an output of the simulator that I know. Well, the only over output that I can calculate would be u, right? u is a uniform 0, 1. And this one, I know exactly its true mean. And actually, I know its true variance as well. The, the true expectation of u is 0 0.5. And the variance is 1 divided by 12. So the covariance between the two here is something like 0, 0,14. I can use it to calculate the best possible c using the formula that you have seen. c star is equal to minus the covariance divided by the variance. Basically, here we have c star, which is minus 169. Let's test the technique with this value of c bar and 10,000 draws. So what I have done, I have one column where I generate the uniform draws. This is corresponding to the variable y in the description that I've made before. And I have also collected the e to the u, which corresponds to the variable x. And then I calculate the regression. I obtain a hat equals this value and b hat equals this value. 
the value of mu is one half, therefore I can obtain my estimate of the integral using this technique. And I can calculate the variance, which is very small, compared to the 0 0.24 that we had with independent draws. So this illustrates the significant reduction that we can achieve using this technique. And I insist again, with control variance, you cannot deteriorate the variance. You can only improve it. This is again uh, an illustration of the draws. So the draws with no control are spread in this interval. These are the blue one, while the draws which are controlled are uh, grouped around the mean, which is here. Let's apply this technique on a more advanced case. I mean, this was very simple for an integral. And I decided to go back to the example that I used in the lecture on discrete event simulation when I was simulating the operation of a bar. In that case, the information that I'm interested in is the average time spent by the customers in the bar. This is basically what characterizes the level of service of the bar. And I want to calculate an estimate of the ex expectation of this. What I know is the average service time. Why? Because this is something that is an input to my simulator. In the example that I presented in the lecture, the average service time was 1 in the beginning. And then I tried 0 0.2. So this is something that I know. It's an input. And this is the most important part. These two variables are correlated, right? If I have a waiter who works faster, well, I expect the average time spent by the customers in the bar to be lower and the other way around. So we are strongly connected, but they are not equal. This is an example of the correlation I was talking about. So here I plotted on the x-axis the service time, and this is the total time spent by the customer. And this diagonal corresponds to cases when they are equal. Basically, these are instances where there is no queue. And basically, each customer is arriving, the bar is empty, so the time they spent in the bar is exactly the time that the waiter needs to serve them. While these values, which are not on the diagonal, are instances when there is a queue. And in this case, they spent the time in the bar, partly in the queue, partly being served by the waiter. But this is a good example where I have two variables, one that I don't know, one which I know, and they are closely correlated. As we discussed, it's important to know the true value of the expectation of y, and this is known, this is an input to the simulator. The average service time is 0 0.2. But if you remember from this lecture on discrete event simulation, because I am simulating a very short period, was 10, there are several days of several instances when the first customer arrives after the bar is already closed. So during the whole simulation, we don't have customers every day. They are actually customers 63.2% of the days, and this is again something I can calculate from the input of the simulator. Therefore, the expected value of y is equal to 0 0.632, which is this percentage, times mu. This true value must be calculated before you run the simulator. It cannot be calculated based on simulated values. It must be based on theory or, or on analysis. This is really important. You should never use simulated values to calculate this expectation of y, which is a key parameter of the control variate algorithm. And I insist because this is something that I have seen in the past, people using simulated values to obtain mu, but this is not working that way. And then I have tried it. So this is the scenario when the mean service time is 0 0.2, the mean inter-arrival time of customers is 0 0.1, and the closure at the bar is at 10. I'm, I'm using 1,000 draws. And I have compared the regular estimate with the control variance. And as you can see, we have different values here. 
But if we calculate the variance, we have a significant reduction of the variance using the control variance. And it makes sense, right? Because as we could see, the reduction of the variance is related with the correlation between the two variables. And as we saw on the picture, the two variables are strongly correlated. I have increased the number of draws to show you that indeed this regular estimate will eventually converge to the true value. So if we increase the number of draws, we also increase the precision. While in the control variate case, the precision that I obtain is basically the same as before. It means that if I use the control variate, the precision that I reach with 100,000 draws is basically the same as the one that I reach with 1,000 draws. So it's a big saving. Great. So what I wanted to show you in this uh, example of the discrete event simulation is that this works not only to calculate integral, it works on real simulator. And the key thing to remember is that you need to identify a variable y which is correlated with x and such that you know the true value of the mean. And I mean it, it must be the true value. You cannot use the sample mean. This must be known before you run the simulator. And they must be correlated, and of course, the higher the correlation, the better the reduction you will obtain on the variance. These are the two most important variance reduction techniques, the antithetic draws and the control variates. As we saw, both of them are exploiting the correlation between two quantities. The antithetic draws was way simpler, but it does not always work. We have to verify that it is indeed applicable for the specific example that we have in mind. While the control variates is more complicated, basically it amounts to solve a linear regression after you have run the simulator to obtain a, a good estimate of your parameter. But it always works in the sense that the variance of this parameter that you obtain cannot be worse than the one using independent draws. Of course, you have several other techniques. I will not go through them. I would like just to give you keywords that you can Google if you're interested to go beyond these two techniques. So you have uh, conditioning, stratified sampling, important sampling, and draw recycling. And in general, the key philosophy behind all these techniques is that correlation helps because you exploit some information provided by another random variable which is correlated with the one that you are analyzing.